This is Dave Lee for Six Towns Radio. I am very pleased to be in the presence of author and sports writer John Henderson, who has just written a book on Stanley Matthews called The Wizard, The Life of Stanley Matthews. And uh, I have read the book. One thing I can say is that there's been a lot of research, and I just overheard you say that uh, two years of research? Two, yep, a very, a two years of research, and uh, that included going through... Um, newspaper articles, magazine articles for every day of his life as a professional footballer i.e. you know more than 30 years so that took me a long time many treks up to the uh, uh, British newspaper library in Collindale in North London but it was, it was fun, it was great and particularly as he's such a fantastic uh, individual um, so, I'd, and, I'd, so I didn't regret a day of it it's quite surprising that there aren't that many books about Stanley Matthews. You would think there'd be sort of like shelves full of them, but in mm. fact, there's, I think there's one other biography that was written a long time ago, and uh, the books that, he, that Stanley Matthews wrote himself. So it, it's, it's timely that you should sort of come up with this book. And also, uh, not just timely, you, you've got a completely different approach. You've sort of like ex- expanded very much on the character of Stanley Matthews. Well, uh, you're right there. I mean, when I thought about writing a, a biography of Stanley Matthews, of course I looked at the books that had been written, and really there are only two books of his life that have been written, the 1989 authorised biography and then the 2000 ghosted autobiography. So in both instances uh, the author had, or the writer, the writer had uh, Matthews looking over the uh, shoulder. So there has never been um, a a sort of independent and objective uh, biography of his life been written. I mean, I wouldn't want to diminish either of the, the, those books, but my book is different um, different from those two in that it has taken a sort of impartial view of him. There were, I discovered, several stones that had been left unturned by those uh, those uh, those earlier books, and so what you get, well, you'll get a very different read from this book than from the other books. Um, and, you know, there was this sense, I suppose, being a sense that Matthews led a charmed life, but it was actually quite a troubled life he had. And he played, and if you, if you look at it, he played under six managers um, during his time. He played under three at Stoke. I met Tom May there, Bob McGrory and Waddington. He played under two at uh, Blackpool, Joe Smith and Ron Seward, and he played under Walter Winterbottom for England. He, he actually ended on not good terms, let's put it that way, uh, with four of the six. Mm, yeah. And in fact, most of his time, at, uh, the, the, the manager he served under longest at, um, at uh, Stoke, Bob McGrory, he, he was at war with him almost from the start. And it was one of the reasons, because he didn't get on with him, that he hiked off to Blackpool. So, and I mean, it, 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 was it Matthews's fault? Was it the manager's fault? I suspect it was a, a little bit of both. But um, there was a lot of a lot of resentment to Matthews because he was who he was, because he was such an outstanding player, because he was a genuine superstar before the term had been coined. But he was. You know, I mean, I think the most remarkable statistic about Matthews, he didn't put hundreds on gates, he didn't put thousands on gates, he put tens of thousands on gates. There's never been another footballer, I don't think anywhere, who's actually affected gates quite like yeah. Stanley Matthews in, in, the, in the 30s, 40s. 50s, 60s. <laughs> because, yeah, the comparison to, to today is quite interesting. As you say, you know, there, are, there aren't that many players you say, oh, Wayne Rooney's playing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's uh, going to bring in a few extra <laughs> thousand. It doesn't work that <laughs> no, way, you know. No, no. There was only one Stanley yeah, Matthews yeah, in yeah, that respect. Yeah, yes, there was. Yes, there was. And he was, he was just... Um, well, he, 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 sort of, he sort of advanced the game. It, had been, it was a very sort of stolid, um, bruising sort of game. Um... Mm. Uh, sort of chunky full backs cooking, kicking forwards up in the air and and um, and Matthew sort of advanced it in, in, in skill terms in speed, even on those bad pitches he was he was lightningly quick he was he was an extraordinary player, a player who sort of as I say advanced football through his his 
dedication to the game, uh, the dedication to honing the skills that he had to the pitch that he did hone them. Because you talk about the book about, uh, about the, the way that, that football was played in, in those days and, mm. um, and also the chunky defenders and this sort of thing. Because again, that, that part sort of skipped over in, in, in other books, but you actually sort of start talking about you know, the fact that he, would, um, he, w- he wouldn't retaliate and all that sort of thing. But on the other hand, he would talk to his fellow, fellow colleagues, I think, and, and encourage them to uh, help him in that department. <laughs> I think, is that what yeah, you're saying yeah, in the book? Yeah, well, there the, the, the was Don Ratcliffe, his, who, who, who played with him when he returned to uh, Stoke in the 60s. He made that point that Stanley Matthews sent him out to uh, sent him off to um, um, sort of bad mouth defenders rather than do it himself. He, 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 rat, rat, Don was the ratter, as he was called. Yeah. He, he was he was the man who was dispatched by Matthews to um, give them the give to, to give them the verbal on his behalf yeah and I, there was there's one other story of, of somebody who said that I can't uh, exactly remember who it was but uh, you know yes that certainly was one of his one of his things he, he famously didn't speak to anybody really he didn't really speak to him to um, t- he spoke a little bit to teammates, obviously people like record, but he famously didn't talk to spectators or the opposition. Very, very self-contained sort of individual. So you're doing a book signing today mm. here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we gave it a plug this morning, honestly Good. we did, and uh, <laughs> we were just saying that you were going to be down here. Oh, I bet you're doing a book signing up in Blackpool. Are you doing yeah. one up there? Well, well, I, well I'm hoping to. The, the publicist at r- r- Random House... Because apparently he played there as well. I, mean, yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. know. You know. We don't follow these yeah, things yeah. in Stoke. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm hoping to go up there, of course. Uh, of course I am, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting um, that I mean he was a Stoke man. He was a he was a you know, and, and I suppose he's he's probably if you asked him who he who he which of the two clubs he was most felt most uh, sort of. Uh, connected to, he'd have said Stoke, but it is the fact that his greatest club match was for Blackpool, probably, um, you know, the 53 Cup final. Um, he, it would have been a difficult, it would have been a difficult choice for him to, uh, but um, he definitely liked. I think you could say his greatest connection was with Stoke, and of course he played here. For a longer period of time, and if and one says his greatest um, match was for Blackpool. I mean, I think his greatest season was probably when he got Stoke back into the you know, at the age of 47, 48, when it, whenever it was when he came back, and it, he played it. He played th- th- more than 30 matches at the, that age for Stoke, which was those people who say he went on too long. He was just kept on just to bring the crowds in. They need to consider that season when he was 47, 48. And um, and uh, was an integral part of them getting back into the first division as as, as second division champions. Well, all I can say to people is you must go and buy this book because it is a great book. I was going to take you on one side and ask you about a few other things off 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 mic, which will bore the listeners. But John Henderson, thanks for talking to us. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you.